Ladies and gentlemen, right here. This gentleman right here is my next guest, and he has been a bear handler for 28 years. He stars in a new series on Animal Planet called Project Grizzly. It's strange. Even I can look at a bear in the wild, and it really doesn't seem to have a personality to me. It's just a bear. But you live with them, and you're like, that bear has a personality. That bear just almost seems human-like, if you will. Easy, Bob. Easy, bud. Easy, 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 bud. I'm talking nice about you. Be nice to me. Easy. I'm not saying bad things, so don't do that. If people think I'm afraid of my bears, I kind of am. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the bear man, Jeff Watson. Jeff, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. All right. So, uh, obvious first question, uh, what is wrong with you? How much time do you spend with these bears? Enough. Enough to stay alive. Yeah? But, uh, as far as what's wrong with me, I went to Muhammad Ali's house a couple of times. And I took the, uh, a big Kodiak I had named Brody. You and took a bear? Yes. To Muhammad Ali's house. That sounds strange. Did he know you were coming no, with the bear? No, I was bear? just in town. And I, no, I was actually doing an uh, educational program at his kid's school. Is this the bear? That's the bear. That's the bear, OK. And I stopped by his house, put my head in his mouth, and Ali said, you crazy. Like that. And he's standing about 15 feet away, and it really surprised me because I hadn't heard Ali speak like that since many years ago. And when Muhammad Ali tells you you're crazy, you're probably crazy. So how do you, how do you get started working with bears? And, and what is the work, by the way? I see the play here. What is the work you're doing with these bears? Well, in the past, I did a lot of commercials and TV shows, but my interest was always in just interacting with them. It was really never in doing any commercial projects. That just facilitated feeding the bears. I mean, they're expensive animals. Um, but what we're doing on this show is taking two captive raised bears, captive born and captive raised, and just seeing if I can release them into the wild. Can I teach them what they need to know and what uh, instinctively will come to them when they get to the wild? Well, how, do you, how did you get started with bears? Like, you, these are two grizzly bears that you've got right yes. now. Yeah. How do you, do you work your way up? Do you start with like gummy bears? And Gummies? then work your way, <laughs> koala bears? What, how do you just, you don't just jump into a pit with bears, right? Well, my high school counselor didn't say anything about it. I was going to be a bear trainer, but I got my first bear when I was uh, early 20s. And uh, I had a disease called Guillain-Barre. So I was paralyzed for a while when I was 20 years old, got back on my feet, and I thought, you know, it's changed the way I thought. I was a little, uh, pretty athletic guy, and then I went to being, you know, midlife crisis at age 20. And I, I had an opportunity to get a bear cub. Uh, a guy had one. I wanted to, to get it, and I raised it. I grew up watching Grizzly Adams. I thought, hey, I can do that. And it, to me, it was just my therapy. Go out in the woods and hang out with the bear. But what they didn't tell me when I watched Grizzly Adams is that's how Grizzly Adams died. All right? <laughs> NBC lied to me about that. So you might want to watch your contract a little bit. I don't know if they tell you everything they're supposed Which to tell you. Which one of your bears is it going to eventually turn on you? None of them. None of them? I hope. That means both of them. Because you got, you've got to have a healthy, you've got a healthy fear of them, right? You've got to have a healthy respect for their, oh, I, their I size I have a healthy strength, respect. Right? How big are these bears? These guys are about 700 pounds apiece. Wow. Is Which, that big? Bigger than me. Well, like, can they get bigger than that? Sure. I had Kodiaks. That's the biggest brown bear in the world. And uh, I had Brody for 18 years. He weighed 1,300, maybe 12, 1,300 pounds. And what happened to but him? But can't kill you any deader than a 700-pounder, okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just imagining what part of this conversation I'm going to play back later in the memorial. <laughs> uh, now, why do you think people are fascinated with bears? Because bears have such an iconic... Um, I'm afraid of bears. People thought my old character was like... He was afraid of bears. That's one thing he and I have in common. They like, I dream about bears. Like, if things are going bad in my life, I'll dream like there's a bear between me and like a goal I have. Why do you think bears are, are so iconic? They remind us of us. Bears, if the anatomy alone, they have an all known radius in their forearms like us. So they can manipulate their paws like we manipulate our, our hands. They're bipedal, they stand on two legs, they're plantigrade, they walk heel toe. The Native Americans looked at them and said, hey, I'll follow that bear and see what it eats. They're omnivores, they're primarily omnivores. 80 to 90% of black bear or brown bear's diets, an omnivorous diet. So there's a lot of things about the bears that remind us of us, and I think that's why we hold them in high regard. We have no primates in North America, so that's the animal we, we love because we're selfish and we love us. So, so if I'm, uh, let's say I'm out in the wild, what kind of bear uh, would I be safer running into? I don't want to run into either right. kind, but if I was going to run into a bear in the wild, what do, what do I want to run into? One that's already eaten, 
It's already had lunch. Already had lunch. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Is it grizzly bear or a brown okay, bear? Yeah. A, a black bear or a brown bear more likely to, to come at me and eat me? Well, I mean, statistically, you have a greater chance of being struck by lightning in a national park than you do of being attacked or killed by a bear. Uh, black bears tend to attack you more, uh, more in a. A, they're more aggressive when they're, when they're acting offensively. Uh, brown bears tend to attack you defensively. Let's say you're in Yellowstone Park and you surprise a grizzly mother with cubs. If you surprise her, it's a sudden encounter. She doesn't, doesn't know that you're coming. She perceives you as a threat. She may try to eliminate that perceived threat, so she tries to kill you. Uh, that's when you play dead. Black bears rarely attack you because you surprise them. Black bears, when they do attack, it's usually an offensive attack. It's one of those rare few cases where a black bear wants to kill you and consume you. So they tell you to fight back with a black bear, play dead with a brown bear. So I'm lying down on the ground, and the grizzly comes over, and... Uh... You lie down when the bear's very close or on you, you see. You don't want to just lie down and go, come get me. Obviously, I'm not trying to seduce the bear. Does that work at all? Does that work uh, at I've all? never tried no, it. No, no. No. No? All right. It's a pretty intimate photograph here. Between well, thank you. The bear. you. I don't know about that. That's, it gets lower that looks like I, that's, uh, that's second base where I come from. <laughs> now, uh, you've got kids. Yeah. You've, you've raised bears, you've raised kids. How would you compare them? Well, which is easier? Kids can embarrass you at Walmart, bears can eat you. So. Figure so it out. It's a coin toss. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, sir. Nice to meet you. Project Grizzly airs Saturday nights on Animal Planet. Jeff Watson.